welcome and it's time for the year-end wrap-up and I have three yes three late-breaking discoveries I have to tell you about before the year ends that I think are going to be game changers in science and oh what's this I'm excited! There are three new breakthroughs and the year hasn't ended! Well, the first one is the discovery by Analem of an RNA interference drug. Now, RNA interference was discovered in 2006 by two U.S. scientists, but the thing is, RNA is what we call in science a label molecule, a very delicate one. So if you put it in the human body, which is a pretty tough place, it's hot, it's wet, We've got bacteria and acids in our stomach and enzymes and macrophages that want to eat things in our bloodstream. So it didn't last long. So this drug company came up with a way of nanotechnology to deliver it. Now, they've made it the drug, the first drug that's been approved for basically a rare disease in which an, a dangerous protein is made and it deposits in the peripheral nervous system and in the heart and unfortunately that can lead to death. So, uh, they've come up with the first drug and what this means is if nature has not given us the best luck of the draw, it means perhaps in the future if we have genes that are producing unfortunate or bad metabolites that are harming us in some way, they might be able to develop a drug within this new, brand new class of drugs, RNA interference, that could possibly turn off the products of these bad and harmful genes. And that's number one, but I'm not done yet. Number two, there has been a breakthrough in how scientists may see small molecules. Now, in order for a molecule to work, let's say, you have an enzyme, they work by this kind of lock and key type theory where if this is the enzyme and you want to break something down, you know, the substrate of the enzyme, it goes in here, you know, it has to fit this particular cleft. Or if this is the receptor of, on a cell and the receptor turns on a specific uh, process in the cell, you need to have something that fits in the receptor. Okay, so that's how drug discovery works. We have natural components that are made that fit in these receptors or turn things on and off, but drugs can mimic not the exact molecule often, but just the shape of the molecule. And this particular paper, 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 uh, allows scientists to view these small molecules, which uh, in a very, very short time, they don't have to do isolation, x-ray diffraction, it's going to speed up the process of looking and screening small molecules in drug discovery. Now hopefully we'll find out ways in which we don't need drugs and we can do things in a healthy manner, but that's number two. Number three, you don't hear much about AIDS these days. Um, we have a lot of drugs to help treat it. Uh, we know how to prevent it, but it's still there. And people who have contracted it have the problem of taking, once they find a drug regime that works for them, they have to take it for life. And these, these drugs are usually very toxic, hard to take, um, and give you a lot of unpleasant side effects. And if you don't take them, you're going to die. But breakthrough number three is that the Pasteur Institute has developed a method, ex vivo, and I'll talk about in vivo, ex vivo, but ex vivo, uh, to actually turn off selectively the metabolism of the T cells that harbor the reservoir of HIV. Now HIV can exist in the bloodstream and they can kill it with these drugs but usually there are dormant reservoirs in the body and that's why they have to basically they have to have these um, take these drugs for life because it can pop up at any time. But if this technique works, if this discovery works, it would allow them to eliminate HIV from the body. Now, let me talk about in vivo, ex vivo, and so forth. Okay, when we do an experiment in an animal, you know, or it's called in vivo. If we do it 
from the tissues of the animal, like in this case the white blood cells in a test tube or a petri dish, it's called ex vivo. It's still living tissue, but it's not, it's not um, in the animal, okay? If we say it's in vitro, it means we took whatever it was, and usually it's chemicals, molecules, whatever, or some bacteria, we put it in a test tube and see if, if it worked. And lastly, the last term you may not be familiar with is in silico. Now lots of times you see fantastic discovery made and uh, some amazing headline out there. And if you look at the bottom, it says in silico. And that means it was in a computer model. Now computers are becoming faster and faster and faster, much more powerful. So these in silico experiments can actually give us great insights, but we shouldn't take much, we shouldn't take much from them until we actually see them working in a biological system. And that's number three. So, my fabulous shirt. Anyhow, do you remember I shared a video, or I made a video on crowdfunding? And it was done by lifespan.io, and I'll put the, I'll put the website there. Anyhow, um, it was able to fund a rather elaborate mouse NAD study in David Sinclair's lab in Harvard. Now, I'm one of the minor funders of it, but I'll tell you, think minor, you know, uh, and I got this t-shirt from it, but I also am getting something else, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Anyhow, remember they took the mice that were old mice, they gave them the NMN, and they were able to outrun the young mice on the treadmill? Well, now they're going to be able to take mice, and they've got these special mice that they have that are knockout mice that age fast. So they can actually look at multiple generations fairly quickly and get ideas how this works. And you know, how long, how much longer the mice might live if this actually is reversing aging. Because remember we know from the first studies what it is, the mechanism they found is that it increased the vascularization of the muscles. So they ended up getting more nutrition because as you age you stop producing basically blood vessels as they're needed and so forth uh, in the tissues and the muscles and so forth and you get less nutrition and that's why you get tired and so on so you know oxygen and so on so anyhow uh, we'll see if this works because when we say anti-aging you know that's kind of a magic thing we jump into a lake and after we jump into the lake we come out and we're 20 again well it's not quite like that we're looking at can we become more energetic? Can we reverse some of the diseases of aging? But that, that's another thing. But let me tell you about the exciting stuff about this t-shirt. This t-shirt also is going to allow me to have advanced access to the data. And just to speak on an ethical standpoint, I'm sure they'll have some guidance as whether or not you can share the advanced data with um, publicly, or if you have to wait for a paper to come out, but as soon as I'm allowed to share that, I will share the advanced data so you will be the first to know uh, about how this study is working. And it's, take a look at the Lifespan IO site and the description of the study. Uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, tidbits and um, more elaborate information on what they're going to do. So take a look at that. And next, I very often have discussions with various members of our community here, and I feel like I'm getting to know you. So I thought I'd share some of the things that we've done as we wind down the year, kind of on a personal note. And I've got a special happy little treat for you at the end of this video. So keep watching, I'm almost done. So first, I want to let you know that my husband and I decorated our house for Christmas. And one of the th fun things we've always liked to do is put up Christmas lights. So here's a little view of some of the Christmas lights we put up this year. I, I hope you enjoy it. We have fun doing it. Uh, and it's one of the things that... we bond together over in our own geeky manner. The other thing is 
Christmas baking. I love to bake. And I'm often inspired. I was at the hairdresser and they had a copy of this magazine, Bon Appetit. We actually got it at home too through some airline miles. Um, I usually try to cook healthier than some of these things, but I saw this great picture and I said, oh wow, these cookies look fabulous. I'm going to make them. I'm going to make them. I'm going to box them up pretty like they have in the magazine cover. should have known better than to try to bake the cover of Bon Appetit and give them to my friends. So anyhow, here's what they were supposed to look like and here's how mine turned out. Oops. But not all is lost. Every year I make a heavy fruit cake for my husband. I married a, a Brit and in England you'll find out that for birthdays and Christmas they don't have sponge cakes like we're used to. They have a heavy fruit cake and for the adults it's soaked in brandy, covered in marzipan and a white sugar icing. Okay, I didn't say it was the healthiest food, but on an aside, hikers are now replacing their granola and granola bars with fruit cake because it has a lot of energy and it actually has more nutrition, magnesium and so forth than the granola. Who knew? So anyhow, I decorate it differently every year. One year I did it as the global, we had a very warm winter so I did the global warming fruit cake and put ducks on the pond. This year we had every animal it seemed come and visit us from the local forest preserve. So I decorated it like this in order to do honor to the animals. So the other thing we have is we have these really nice little video cameras. And they you know, show us we got a package, but they've turned out to act more as wildlife cams. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. So it's January. What does January mean to me? Well, I love eating healthy. And there's nothing more than I like doing is growing some of my own vegetables and fruits in the summer. And I start my plan in January and the catalogs start arriving. So I'm picking out what the healthiest foods with the biggest bang, the most colorful, the most healthy, the most anti-aging that I can plant in my garden. And maybe I'll make a video about that if you like. So here without further ado, take a look at our visitors throughout the year. I hope you enjoy. Some may be a little surprising. Um, the cameras have an infrared mode, so the ones at night will be in black and white and the ones at day in color. So you'll see a little switch back and forth. Happy New Year! And I can't wait to see what breakthroughs we have in 2019. Snow, you know. 